Hello guys welcome to our channel Bankers Decoder. So from today onwards we are going to start Philip Kotler Marketing Management Book Chapter Wise Session. This book will definitely going to give good marks in IBPS so marketing means. There is no margin of error for marketing. A short time ago, MySpace, Yahoo, Blockbuster, and Barnes & Noble were admired leaders in their industries. What a difference a few years make. Each of these brands has been completely overtaken by an upstart challenger. Facebook, Google, Netflix, and Amazon. And they, they now struggle for mere survival. One of the shortest good definitions of marketing Marketing is about identifying and meeting human and social needs. The art and science of choosing target markets and getting, keeping, and growing customers through creating, delivering, and communicating superior customer value is the sole definition of marketing management. Marketers market 10 main types of entities, including goods, services, events, experiences, persons, places, properties, organizations, information, and ideas. Who markets? A marketer is someone who seeks a response, attention, a purchase, a vote, a donation, from another party called the prospect. There are eight demand states. Negative demand, consumers dislike the product and may even pay to avoid it. Non-existent demand, consumers may be unaware of or uninterested in the product. Latent demand, consumers may share a strong need that cannot be satisfied by an existing product. Declining demand, consumers begin to buy the product less frequently or not at all. Irregular demand, consumer purchases vary on a seasonal, monthly, weekly, daily, or even hourly basis. And full demand, consumers are adequately buying all products put into the marketplace. Five basic markets and their connecting flows are shown in Figure 1.1. Manufacturers go to resource markets, buy resources, and turn them into goods and services. They then sell finished products to intermediaries who sell them to consumers. Consumers sell their labor and receive money with which they pay for goods and services. The government collects tax revenues to buy goods from resource, manufacturer, and intermediary markets and uses these goods and services to provide public services. Figure 1.2 shows how sellers and buyers are connected by four flows. Sellers send goods and services and communications such as ads and direct mail to the market. In return, they receive money and information such as customer attitudes and sales data. The inner loop shows an exchange of money for goods and services. The outer loop shows an exchange of information. Key customer markets. Consumer markets. Companies selling mass consumer goods and services such as juices, cosmetics, athletic shoes, and air travel establish a strong brand image. Business markets are companies selling business goods and services, and they often face well-informed professional buyers skilled at evaluating competitive offerings. Then there's global markets. Companies in the global marketplace navigate cultural, language, legal, and political differences while deciding which countries to enter, how to enter, how to adapt product and service features, how to set prices, and how to communicate. In nonprofit and governmental markets, these companies are selling to nonprofit organizations with limited purchasing power, such as churches, universities, charitable organizations, and government agencies. A U.S. consumer needs 
food, but may want a Chicago-style deep-dish pizza and a craft beer. A person in Afghanistan needs food, but they may want rice, lamb, and carrots. Our wants are shaped by our society. Types of needs. There are stated needs. The customer wants an, ex an inexpensive car. Real needs. The customer wants a car whose operating cost, not initial price, is low. Unstated needs. The customer expects good service from the dealer. Delight needs. The customer would like the dealer to include an onboard GPS system. And secret needs. The customer wants friends to see him or her as a savvy consumer. Not everyone likes the same cereal, restaurant, university, or movie. Marketers therefore identify distinct segments of buyers by identifying demographic, psychographic, and behavioral differences between them. They then decide which segments present the greatest opportunities. For each of these target markets, the, the firm develops a market offering that it positions in target buyers' minds as delivering some of these key benefits. A brand name such as Apple carries many different kinds of associations in people's minds. Creative, innovative, easy to use, fun, cool, iPod, iPhone, and iPad to name just a few. All companies strive to build a brand image with as many strong, favorable, and unique brand associations as possible. To reach a target market, the marketer uses three kinds of marketing channels. Communication channels, which deliver and receive messages from target buyers and include newspapers, magazines, radio, television, mail, telephone, smartphone, billboards, posters, and others. Distribution channels help display, sell, or deliver the physical product. To carry out transactions with potential buyers, the marketer also uses service channels that can include warehouses, transportation companies, banks, and insurance companies. Core marketing concepts also include paid media, TV, magazine, and display ads, owned media, a company or brand brochure, website, blog, Facebook page, or Twitter account, or earned media, word of mouth, buzz, or viral marketing. Marketers now think of three screens or means to reach consumers, TV, internet, and mobile. The buyer chooses the offerings he or she perceives to deliver the most value, the sum of the tangible and intangible benefits and costs. If performance falls short of expectations, the customer is disappointed. If it matches expectations, the customer is satisfied. If it exceeds them, the customer is delighted. Each company in the chain captures only a certain percentage of the total value generated by the supply chain's value delivery system. When a company acquires competitors or expands upstream or downstream, its aim is to capture a higher percentage of the supply chain value. An automobile manufacturer can buy steel from U.S. Steel in the United States from a foreign firm in Japan or Korea, or from a mini mill such as Nucor at a cost savings, or it can buy aluminum parts from Alcoa to reduce the car's weight or engineered plastics from Saudi Basic Industries Corporation instead of steel. Marketers must pay close attention to the trends and developments in these and adjust their marketing strategies as needed. The task environment, the actors engaged in producing, distributing, and promoting the offering. Broad environment, demographic environment, economic environment, social cultural environment, natural environment, technological environment, and political legal environment. Technology, massive amounts of information and data about almost everything is now available. Globalization. The world has become definitely a smaller place. 
Globalization has made countries increasingly multicultural and changes innovation and product development as companies take ideas and lessons from one country and apply them to another. Social responsibility. The private sector is taking some responsibility for improving living conditions. And firms all over the world have elevated the role of corporate responsibility. Social media is an explosive worldwide phenomenon. Empowerment is not just about technology, though. Consumers are willing to move to another brand if they think they are not be being treated right or do not like what they are seeing. Expanded information, communication, and mobility enable customers to make better choices. Social media is an explosive worldwide phenomenon. Empowerment is not just about technology, though. Consumers are willing to move to another brand if they think they are not being treated right. Expanded information, communication, and mobility enable customers to make better choices. New company capabilities. They can use the internet as a powerful information and sales channel. They can collect fuller and richer information about markets, customers, prospects, and competitors. They can reach customers quickly and efficiently via social media and mobile marketing, sending targeted ads, coupons, and information. New company capabilities. They can improve purchasing, recruiting, training, and internal and external communications. They can also improve cost efficiency. One of the reasons consumers have more choices is that channels of distribution have changed as a result of retail transformation and disintermediation. Entrepreneurial retailers are building entertainment into their stores with coffee bars, demonstrations and performances, marketing and experience rather than a product assortment. While globalization has created intense competition among domestic and foreign brands, the rise of private labels and mega brands and a trend toward deregulation and privatization have also increased competition. Companies must always move forward, innovating products and services, staying in touch with customer needs, and seeking new advantages. Marketers are increasingly asked to justify their investments in financial and profitability terms, as well as in terms of building the brand and growing the customer base. Increasingly, marketing is not done only by the marketing department. Every employee, in fact, has an impact. To create a strong marketing organization, marketers must think like executives in other departments, and executives in other departments must think like marketers. The production concept is one of the oldest concepts in business. It holds that consumers prefer products that are widely available and inexpensive. Managers of production-oriented businesses concentrate on achieving high production efficiency with low costs. The product concept proposes that consumers favor products offering the most quality performance or innovative features. The selling concept holds that consumers and businesses, if left alone, won't buy enough of the organization's products. It is practiced most aggressively with unsought goods. And the marketing concept emerged in the mid-1950s as a customer-centered sense-and-respond philosophy. The job is to find not the right customers for your products, but the right products for your customers. The holistic marketing concept is based on the development, design, and implementation of marketing programs, processes, and activities. Holistic marketing acknowledges that everything matters in marketing and that a broad, integrated perspective is often necessary. Relationship marketing aims to build mutually satisfying long-term relationships with key constituents in order to earn and retain their business. Four key constituents are, cu are customers, employees, marketing partners, 
and members of the financial community. Marketers must create prosperity among all these constituents and balance the returns to all key stakeholders. To develop strong connections with them requires understanding their capabilities and resources, their needs, their goals, and their desires. Two key themes of integrated marketing are that, number one, many different marketing activities can create, communicate, and deliver value. And number two, marketers should design and implement any one marketing activity with all other activities in mind. Marketing succeeds only when all departments work together to achieve customer goals. When engineering designs the right products, finance furnishes the right amount of funding, purchasing buys the right materials, and production makes the right products in the right time horizon and accounting measures profitability in the right ways. Performance marketing requires understanding the financial and non-financial returns to business and society from marketing activities and programs. When they founded Ben & Jerry's, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield embraced the performance marketing concept by dividing the traditional financial bottom line into a double bottom line that also measured the environmental impact of their products and processes. That later expanded into a triple bottom line to represent the social impacts, both negative and positive, of the firm's entire range of business activities. Many years ago, McCarthy classified various marketing activities into marketing mixed tools of four broad kinds, which he called the four P's of marketing, product, price, place, and promotion. The marketing variables under each P are shown in figure 1.5. The holistic marketing concept encompasses modern marketing realities, people, processes, programs, and performance, as shown in figure 1.6. People reflects in part internal marketing and the fact that employees are critical to success. Processes reflects all the creativity, discipline, and structure brought to marketing management. Programs reflects all the firm's consumer-directed activities. We define performance as in holistic marketing to capture the range of possible outcome measures that have financial and non-financial implications. Marketing management tasks, developing marketing strategies and plans, capturing marketing insights, connecting with customers, and building strong brands. Additional marketing management tasks include creating value, delivering value, communicating value, and creating successful long-term growth. Hey, thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos in this marketing management series. Thanks again.